on an even deeper level is if you've got more money, more stakes involved, you increase the in incentives for possible inefficiencies, even corruption, maladministration to take place. The world is going through a turbulent economic time. South Africa cannot afford to score any own goals, but we keep insisting on doing so. Joining me to discuss South African policy in the context of a volatile global economy is my colleague Chris Hutting from the Center for Risk Analysis. But before we start this interview, just a quick reminder that we at the CRA have a range of products and services available to our clients. There's a link in the description below where you can find out more. Much of this conversation will be based on our weekly risk alert, which comes out every Monday morning at 7 a.m. So, Chris, uh, let's look at the South African economy in this global context. And we've just seen some pretty aggressive interest rate hikes from the South African Reserve Bank. What impact do you think that's going to have on the domestic economy? Thanks, David. Of course, the Reserve Bank's hike came on the back of the latest inflation numbers from August. So inflation was slightly down from the July reading of 7.8%. The Reserve Bank may be feeling some of its tightening is doing the necessary work in terms of dampening economic activity, borrowing, trying to lower some of the costs in the economy, but not to a substantive degree, which is why they stuck with their 75-point uh, hike uh, last week. This also followed what the US Fed did for the third time in a row, 75 basis points. The Bank of England went for 50 basis points, in contrast to countries such as China, and Japan, which are cutting rates, uh, Turkey as well, but maybe we shouldn't use the lira as an example of uh, keeping value in one's currency. So South Africa following the major trend around the world where central banks are trying to tighten monetary conditions and get a, a handle on very red hot inflation. I think monetary policy can only take you so far when a lot of the causes are in terms of policy, driving up costs, uh, government administrated costs, higher taxes, those sorts of things, increasing costs across the board, central banks can only do so much. So to give the Reserve Bank some credit, um, following the trend of the Fed especially will ensure that the some of the value of the RAND is protected uh, in contrast to what we might see this morning, especially uh, this week from coming from England, where on the back of uh, promises of tax cuts, the value of the pound has drastically fallen against the dollar. So the value of the RAND being protected for the time being but I think as the country continues with those own goals that you've pointed out, things such as having a monopoly monopoly in electricity in the form of ESCOM, expropriation without compensation very much on the table. If you've got those, those factors weakening your own economy, those structural fissure issues, that means you're more exposed to imported inflation when things go badly in the global context. Things in your own country will go badly. So if we don't get those things right over the long run, we're going to struggle no matter what the Reserve Bank does. Yeah, and of course, as we point out in our risk alert, uh, inflation has stabilized somewhat, but there's still been increases in food and non-alcoholic beverages, uh, which has increased by 11.3% in August. So that's going to hit the uh, the poor in particular. Uh, so let's zoom in on some of these potential own goals. We've got the EWC bill before Parliament. It's going to impact potentially on the agricultural space and agricultural exports of been a big driver of South Africa's current account surplus, along with uh, many of the minerals exports during the last two years of the commodities boom. Uh, do you see that potentially impacting negatively on South Africa's economy? So the main reason why it will be negative is because of dampened economic activity and demand in the rest of the world. So if you look at two regions, especially the Eurozone and China, those are South Africa's biggest export markets, both in terms of agricultural products, but also in terms of mining commodities, raw materials. So if they've got lower economic activity, they're struggling to get growth going. China's pursuing zero COVID. The EU is dealing with electricity uh, crises and lower e economic activity as they head into their winter. If there's less consumer demand, that means more pressure on South African exporters. Now, there are other opportunities for those exporters to explore. But again, another own goal that they have to navigate is South Africa's declining infrastructure. So the railways, uh, the ports, the roads falling into disrepair basic maintenance not being done. So if those exporters can maybe diversify to places like Namibia or Maputo, the port at Maputo, which is a uh, stepping up serious investment, maybe South African exporters can weather the coming storm and export to regions which are growing better than China and the EU might do going forward. And of course, this week, the rand depreciated against the dollar, crossing that 18 rand to the dollar mark. 
that's going to have some pretty significant impacts. And as you have warned frequently in some of our alerts, that exposes South Africa to the risk of imported inflation. Could you expand on that, that concept? So again, tying this to our theme in, in today's discussion around uh, own goals in terms of policy and regulations, because we can't rely on ESCOM to provide cheap, reliable electricity, our manufacturing and industrial base has steadily declined over the last 10 years. So we've got a lot of raw materials, which we can export and get those to more developed, uh, complex economies. But we, when we want to import uh, consumer goods, we want to import components that we use in manufacturing, we need to rely on those from other countries. And then when you buy in other currencies and your currency is weaker, that means that you're paying more both in nominal and real terms, and therefore your own currency stands to weaken. So because we've scored that own goal of not having cheap, reliable electricity, we make it more difficult for our own manufacturers uh, to get industrial activity going in the country without having to rely on imported goods. So when things change in the global context, where, for example, now uh, a lot of people, a lot of investors are flooding, uh, are heading towards the US dollar as a safe haven, currencies such as the RAND especially stand to weaken because you're importing more and you're buying more in other currencies. Right. So, Chris, many people look at the lack of available electricity in South Africa and they point towards various uh, green energy solutions. But as we point out in our risk alert this week, there is a cautionary tale from Germany, uh, which is that producer price inflation, which essentially looks at uh, prices from uh, manufacturing production, that reached up to 45.8%, which was up 7.9% from the previous reading. This is the highest level since surveying this variable began in 1949. So as we warn in the risk alert, this tilt towards renewable energy comes with some risks. It could actually contribute to inflationary pressures. No, absolutely. Energy costs are a major driver of inflation across the board because businesses uh, of all sizes in all industries have to contend with those costs. When those increase, um, they also pass on those costs to their consumers in terms of services and goods. So it's one thing to, to focus and to pivot towards renewable energy sources to build up one's capacity. I think it's arguably a good point to have more diversified forms of electricity provision and distribution and not just focus on one maybe if you think of the idea of hedging your bets and, and making sure that you're not just exposed to one risk maybe but on the other hand it depends where you're getting those components for that renewable energy technology so where you importing those from can you manufacture them locally or not uh, where are you getting the raw materials from so now again for example if china heads towards dampened economic activity will they then have government decrees uh, declaring that the renewable tech has to stay within China? Will they have quotas on how much they export maybe to certain countries? Will they have incentives or punishments for those countries which don't follow their own lines on investment, that sort of thing? That's a big risk if we're going to rely on a country like China maybe for that technology. If we get it from the EU or the US, what do those parameters come with? Uh, what are the requirements in, in terms of the lending maybe? Uh, such funding given to the government, the South African government, are there still going to be require, requirements around local procurement, BE deals? Will only those with the necessarily necessary political connections get those investments? What does that mean for economic efficiency or the lack of thereof? Does only big business, big, big business get that investment? All of those, I think, are serious risks. And the, the higher issue, I think, on, on an even deeper level is if you've got more money, more stakes involved, you increase the in incentives for possible inefficiencies, even corruption, maladministration to take place so you've raised the stakes now you've got these billions coming in you've got renewable tech being sold as the complete solution to all energy problems um, so it's got serious political clout as well then i think you're going to increase the incentives for for serious corruption happening in the future chris hatting thank you very much let's hand over to you our audience what own goals do you think south africa is scoring against itself leave your thoughts down in the comment section below also, if you would like access to our weekly client risk alerts, you can become a subscriber to the CRA. There is more information in the link in the description below about how you can become a client of the Center for Risk Analysis. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.